Hello everyone, this is Sherlock and welcome to Civilization 5. This was a community's choice. I had put on the Facebook page for our uh, little group saying, uh, hey, what guys, what kind of game would you guys like to see on my channel? And uh, one of the most popular ones was, of course, Civilization 5, which we're doing today. Uh, I will be doing a marathon game, so this is going to be a very long playthrough. Um, but we're going to be breaking it up because I need breaks. I don't think I can sit here and play 24 hours of Civilization V to beat a marathon game. Uh, we are playing on Emperor difficulty, which is a, a very hard AI or level 6 difficulty, uh, which is actually going to cause all kinds of new problems because I'm going to be new to this difficulty. I'm usually used to playing on Prince or King, uh, but my friend recommended that I try it on this one because that's what he plays and you know I'm always down for a challenge. I am playing with a random civilization, which is the Celtic Empire today, and it's a huge map, which I think is like eight civilizations or ten civilizations and a hundred city-states. I don't know. It's out of control. So uh, I'm really curious how this is going to play out. Now, I did do one alter altercation to the game. I changed it from um, just regular playstyle to, you know, regular victories to science being out of the equation. You can't win with a scientific victory. Reason being is I've had about four games now where I've played against the Iroquois, and every single game the Iroquois wins with a science victory while I'm too busy uh, fighting off like two or three empires uh, in a battle. And some, for some reason, no one ever wants to go to battle with the guy that's, that's enclosing on a science victory. But if I get uranium, everybody's after my ass. It's frustrating. Um, anyways... Druidic lore, okay, the Celtic Empire, plus one faith to cities, uh, yes, with unimproved forest, and so they have a lot of faith, and then they got this Pictish warrior, which actually increases some faith when they kill an opponent, they get 50% of their strength into faith, and of course we have this nice little hall, which increases happiness and culture, and it's only a maintenance of two, so it's actually a really nice hall. Um, so this is going to be interesting for me, because I'm relatively new to a lot of uh, the, the God and King civilizations. Um, so I am really excited to play with the Celtic Empire. Now, I had talked to a friend about it, and the way he described it, he said that they, uh, they get a lot of happiness, um, so you have to use this happiness. Well, what are we going to do here? Well, let's go with, uh, do we have any animals around? Any, anything around that we can use? Yes, we have deer. We got marble. Ooh, I would like that marble. So we're going to go for mining first, even though it's 34 turns. Well, they're all 34 turns. Uh, the reason I want marble is it helps production of wonders, which is going to be very, very nice. So that's, uh, that's excellent. Um, but yeah, anyways, I was asking him, and he said, uh, well... One of the problems with Civilization V and Gods and Kings right now is uh, the game is really broken science right now. Um, and like I was describing, the Iroquois is always winning with scientific victories. And a lot of players are running into this, and, it, and it's kind of a, a, an imbalance, uh, and it's just, it sucks. So what they've actually done here recently is they created a modification to the game that you can, you can download as a modification to the game, which will actually make it so that science is actually as slow as marathon speed, but everything else is standard speed. So culture increase, um, citizenship increase, production is all at a standard speed, but science is much slower. So already we are running into a problem. We are just covered in jungle. And because of it, my warriors are moving really, really slow, which means that I'm not getting to explore as much. And you can already see the other players are way ahead of me. And they've probably already discovered ancient runes and things to help their civilization out. Ooh, nice citrus. So uh, we are already hindered at a problem. Now, this is early game, so that's not too much of a big deal. And uh, to me... The game is not necessarily about winning as much as it is about the journey. Um, sometimes, especially when I used to play Civilization 2 and 3 and 4, well actually no, I started playing Civilization 3, but Civilization 3 and 4, to me the game was not necessarily about winning. Um, oh, okay, evidence recently activated revealed location nearby. That's it? That's all we got for that stupid ancient civilization was barbarian encampment locations? Uh, oh well. Anyways... Uh, where was I going with that? Yes, the journey. To me, the game is a journey. You know, sometimes I like to see, oh, I got this crappy starting location. Um, I'm on this tiny little island away from all other civilizations. And what can I do to make myself uh, better? What can I do to make, uh, make myself get through this game? And how far can I actually make it? And will my civilization stand the test of time? I love that aspect of the game. And I think if you look at it from that perspective, 
you're really going to enjoy the game. No matter how many turns in, no matter who you're playing with, you're going to enjoy it as long as you look at it as what is the journey. All right, a Ruins Explorer, crudely drawn map which outlines the surrounding area, and it actually showed that we have Ancient Ruins down here, and we have a Barbarian Encampment down here. Really, really concerned about playing on this more difficult AI. Um, I will say I am not a Civilization uh, pro by any means. Um, I'm a veteran of Civilization, but I'm definitely not a pro of it. Okay. So I think I'm going to go with a settler next. It says I should go with monument to increase my culture. Um, that's going to give us increased policies. I'm actually going to go with that instead. We're going to find a pantheon already this early in the game. All right. I think I'm, 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 I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I want to go with sacred path because we get a plus one culture from jungle tiles. Well, needless to say, we have a plentiful of jungle tiles. But... The 15% faster border growth, that also seems really, really nice, but at the same time, in my starting location, the city is not actual prime real estate. Um, I'm not really sure what's out here, so I'm not really looking at good tile locations for uh, needing a large border, if you will. You know, I have deer, and I got some silk and marble, maybe I'll find some other stuff, but really, I think, uh, I think the, the culture increase is going to be much better, simply because uh, it will help me give more policies. All right, there we go. You have found a cultural artifact, which in alls of your citizen, you receive 60 culture. Very nice little rune there. All right, there we go. We get to adopt our first policy. I love liberty. I do. Now, when you adopt a policy, what's kind of nice is you have just an overall uh, policy, and then you have the little tech tree here. So, like, with tradition, adopting tradition increases the rate of border expansions in city and also grants three culture uh, in the capital city, this is pretty nice, and it has a few little things there. But to me, I like Liberty for early culture one. Uh, one, you get some increase in culture to every city. But what I really enjoy is the free worker you get with the citizenship. We're going to look at improvement uh, construction rate increased by 25%, and a worker appears near the settlement or near your capital. Well, I don't get that until my next uh, policy adoption. But for now, this is a really good, uh, really good, I, I enjoy this one. All right, barbarians are actually a lot more difficult on this difficulty. I can already tell. You used to be able to just bum rush a barbarian. Um, but now we actually are going to have to fight against their fortification, and it does a lot more than just, uh, yeah, there we go. All right, let's, we'll, we'll work our way and try to whittling them down. But my worry is that by the time I, I kill this barbarian encampment, they're going to spawn yet another barbarian. All right, let's go ahead and heal. And that will also fortify them, increasing their uh, resistance so that if they decide to attack, which they already did, but if they decide to attack again, uh, they'll have to fight against uh, that. All right, discovered ruins. My scouts discovered another ruin of an advanced technology. And it's pottery. Very, very nice. That's what I want to see. I want to see good stuff like that. All right, there we go. We have a nice little minor victory. Let's try to take them out. And uh, just this way we can uh, heal our next turn, and they're not going to be able to defeat us in the next turn either. So that's what we want. Anytime we have an advantage without killing ourselves, that's, that's great. Oh, and we get to promote them. Now, I'm actually not going to heal them. There's really not much of a reason. Um, and we are going to go with Shock 1 because of the amount of open terrain in the south here. Um, probably would have been better to go with Rough up in the area up there, but, yeah, whatever. All right, decisive victory. Let's go ahead and finish them off. It looks like they didn't spawn any more barbarians in the... Ooh, ooh, that was close. And look at the increase. We got a nice little increase in our faith as well for killing them. Um, so that went well. Oh, another discovered a crudely drawn map outlines the surrounding area thanks to my scouts. Go ahead and heal those barbarians over there. And we can actually see what we have over here. We have yet another ancient ruin off to the north there. So that's where my scouts are going to go for next. And, uh, uh-oh, we have an unmet player over here. And what do we have here? Okay, nice little increase in gold. Have to continue this way. Haven't found a single city-state yet, either. All right, Genghis Khan of uh, Mongolia. That is very, very f scary. He's friendly, but he doesn't look friendly. Um, so, goodbye. And actually, no, we should uh, take a look real quick. I always do this. I just kind of like to see how much money they're making. So he's getting four gold per turn, and he's got 146 gold. So maybe he's spent it on something. Maybe not. Uh, maybe he's not exploring much. Maybe he hasn't killed much. It's hard to tell early game. 
And we found mining, so now we get to go into our next research. And our economic advisor is recommending animal husbandry. Now, I, uh, mm, I really don't know about that because we don't really have any animals down here. So what we're going to have to do is maybe head our next civilization and have it, uh, maybe have it head south where these sheep are or somewhere where I can actually utilize this. And there's also a few things to consider is where else does this go when we open up the technology tree? Um, you know, we don't have a lot of animals right now, right? There's, we don't have any horses. Uh, but we, what we do have is we have deer, and that's where trapping is going to come into play. It allows your workers to construct camps on sources of deer, ivory, fur, and truffles. So in getting um, the animal husbandry, we can then hopefully get into trapping where we can collect these deer here. So we do have some use for it and eventually we're going to need it anyways and it doesn't take that much to get and also it leads to the wheel which is also going to be very important and if we do manage to find some strategic resources for horses we can get horseback riding but right now we are not looking like we have any of that and oh there's another rune let's hopefully get that next turn and discover the rune's secret of an advanced technology and oh wow bronze working that is absolutely fantastic because that was like one of the 40, 50 turn things that we were going to have to worry about. So getting that is really, really nice. Uh-oh, Napoleon. Um, we all know his history. He was short. There we go, our first city-state. And this is very nice. It's actually a religious city-state, as if we didn't have enough religion as was. And this is really making me contemplate what kind of victory I want to go for. I'm kind of starting to think maybe I should go for a cultural victory. Um, just because if I can friend this city-state, they'll increase my culture, which is really, really nice. And I don't really have a lot of... I don't know if I have a lot of uh, good war units or good war materials uh, in the vicinity of a jungle. Another city-state, and this one has culture. They also have sugar, which is a luxury resource. Very, very nice. All right, the next thing I would like to go ahead and get out is yet another settler so we can expand and uh, hopefully collect some more good tiles. 40 turns. That's a long time, man. And this is going to be my first full marathon gameplay. So uh, I've not actually done marathon um, very long. Usually... I just, I always like standard gameplay because I like getting into those future battles. We have another little barbarian village down here. We're going to use the same tactic. We're going to do a little damage, heal, do a little damage, heal. And there is our liberty. We're going to get citizenship. And that is, like I said, 25% um, increase rate on our construction. And a worker appears near the capital. That worker is extremely vital. He's going to go ahead and start tilling the land and uh, working it for best for us. Now, a lot of people might micromanage their workers, and I probably would suspect that that's probably the best thing to do. Um, I usually just like them to kind of go off and do their own thing, though. Found our first natural wonder, Old Faithful, which actually increases the happiness in the empire. That's even if you don't work it, it increases the happiness. And output, if worked, is to science, and you gain three gold if it's within your borders, which is far from. More marble. Always nice to have marble. It's a very good trading resource because a lot of civilizations want it to help build wonders. And if you actually are ever really unsure what something has you know what the special properties are you can always go to the help here it's like the best wikipedia ever in a video game and if we type in marble for example it tells you right there 15 percent production when building wonders in the city where it's worked finishing up this barbarian encampment here and oh didn't quite take it out maybe next turn all right so this is kind of what i was worried about uh with the last barbarian encampment before I could finish off this encampment, they spawn yet another Barbarian. Luckily for me, they are promoted, so we can heal them for 50 hit points, get them at full health, and take this one out. Now, that is very fortunate for me. Hopefully that doesn't happen again, because if it did, there's no way I would have been able to handle that. So, a little 75 gold. That's very, very nice to have. These guys will not be able to kill me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to fortify this uh, until they are able to fully heal themselves or protect themselves from this little Barbarian group here. And as you can see, no damage has been done to either party, so it's time to go ahead and start taking them out because now we have a major uh, victory because we have open terrain attack bonus of 15%, and we have our little bonus versus barbarians thanks to our policy that we adopted with the liberty policy, which gives us a little bit of an increase against them. 
first little fifty state, <laughs> fifty state city state, uh, which is actually if you become friends with them, they increase the amount of food for your capital. Looks like I got some pearls, but really we want that fifteen gold. That's nice to have. So real quick, I wanted to show you guys a little setup feature that I uh, I enjoy doing. Just a real quick setup. Um, some of you guys might be like, well, how come you can see the hexagons and you can see all what the tiles are worth and everything? What the hell is this? Well, uh, that is all very easy. It's in the toggle between the strategic view, uh, right above it, toggle between strategic view, right above that, there's toggle map options, menu on and off. You can turn off resource icons, yield icons, and the hex. I like the grid to be on. It's not very pretty, but it's really good for, uh, it's, it's a lot more helpful when you can calculate how many... Uh, how many how many grid positions are between one capital and another city? So, for example, I like to have about eight between cities. Um, so I could easily count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that'd be a great place to start up there. Um, also, uh, just another little quick setup for you guys that are a little sick of the animations that you see in the game. If you press Escape and you go to your options, I always I always do this when I'm not recording, but you can actually turn off the quick movement and quick combat, or you can turn it on, that is. So what that is is when you turn quick combat on, we'll just go ahead and do a little example here, um, the units only show the amount of damage they did. There's no animation, just like the quick movement right there. You just saw how they just quickly moved. It's the same thing with the, uh, the combat, just like that. They're very, very quick. Um, I recommend it, but I th also like the attack sequences. But when you have 100 plus units, it does get bogged down quite a bit. Ah, the friendly Mayans, or the Aztecs, excuse me. Oh yeah, he's got friendly just written all over him. Never mind all those skulls that are in the background. No, nah, just ignore those. Ah, uh, Washington. Washington. Ten foot tall, made of radiation. Opponents beware. Opponents beware. Well, we took him out. I slaughtered that song, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Yay, we get to adopt yet another policy. I'm going to go with honor this time. Reason being is if you look at the description there, adopting honor gives a 33% combat bonus versus barbarians and these long marathon games we are definitely going to need some help against these barbarians and it also lets you know where the closest barbarian encampments are so uh, we can protect ourselves from it because I have warriors down here in the south doing all this fighting when I should be worried about the barbarian encampment here and the barbarian encampment here especially when I only got nine turns left until my next settler comes out yeah not looking good there Egypt, greetings, I am the great rhinoceros, or what, rhinoceros, <laughs> all right, goodbye, dude, no one cares, there it is, my settler is ready to go, and as I had suspected, it wanted me to pass through by, by this barbarian encampment, so what we're going to do is I got my new warrior that I just bought with gold, and we're going to work our way up there, there it is, our new city, you know, I sometimes question, though, it does ask you, it, you know, it, it gives you some suggestions of where you should put your settlement, and I assume that it, it wanted it here because I get an increase in faith with all the, the jungle tiles, but I, I have to help but wonder why it might not say, why don't you go for these horses down here or over here, or get into a place where the horses and the deer to get together. My only assumption is that maybe it thinks I'm going to get enough culture to expand out that way, but that's going to be many, many turns before that. So it looks like I'm going to be going with a lot of happiness, luxury, and culture uh, early game. And I'm going to be relatively weak in terms of the, uh, well, ooh, archer or monument? Uh... That is a good question. We're going to go Archer on this one. Um, it's going to, you know, I'm going to be relatively weak in terms of military through this first era. Genghis Khan is wasting no time at all. He's already at war with Sydney. That was quick. Well, it looks like Genghis Khan, excuse my camera work here, but it looks like Genghis Khan has already taken over a small city-state. I can't help but wonder if that's a good strategy for me to maybe take out this one here. Oh, gee, I don't know. I'm going to have to say no on taking them out just because they are a religious city-state. There are some benefits to having city-states around. Um, that little culture increase, I might not get that if they weren't around, but then I would get it because of the jungle tiles. And Ah, oh goodness. Really? 25 gold just to accept embassy? Mm, no. We have to say no to that, Egypt. 
All right, we're about 96 turns in. We're actually starting to find that we are uh, starting to run into some issues with these barbarians and my troops being spread so thin. Um, so we're going to take out that little barbarian encampment, and then we have yet another one right outside of my base here, which is probably going to scare my workers. Um, I don't know. Let's see if we can get these guys over there and help them out. And then yet the ones that were attacking Florence over here have made their way all the way over here to Dublin, where we're uh, hopefully going to be able to take them out with the city there. This shouldn't be too much of a problem, though. If given the choice between attacking with the city or attacking with your units, you should always attack with your units to get that little bit of experience. Because if you kill it with the city, you don't get experience, your characters don't grow, they don't get stronger.